Well, I have just completed major upgrades for our Yamaha 275 SD. This is 2022 model. And uh, it's 99.9% .9 completed, so I figure I might as well take a quick video. As you could tell, obviously, we have a Garmin radar on top with uh, Raymarine FLIR, forward looking infrared thermal camera. Those were the major upgrades. It's a little bit dark here. I'll try to uh, shine the light on what I'm doing. We also had to go with a uh, Garmin GPS map, 943XSV. The XSV is the code for uh, sonar. This is a sonar capable unit. Right away, I'll show you before we get too far away. This is where the sonar transducer was mounted as you can see aligned with the direction of travel sticks out slightly as it's supposed to into the wet into the uh, water oncoming flow and uh, we tried to mount it actually I had a dealer mounted it because uh, this is the only thing the dealer did for me everything else I did by myself because they said they knew a good location and they could mount it properly so it has a uh, uh, it sticks out just as much as it needs to into the flow and then uh, they made sure everything was sealed uh, properly as well as they drilled through the hole. So they did this for me. They ran the cable up in here below the swim platform. They sealed everything properly and that's where they left it for me. I took it from here. Cable comes in inside and then goes into the engine compartment. Goes under the helm. So that's our sonar transducer. The main key was uh, proper positioning away from uh, uh, exhaust, uh, jet exhaust, including reverse. It's as far away as it could be. Uh, it had to not interfere with the trailer. The trailer is right there, so that's fine. If I come in kind of sideways, I don't hit it. And it doesn't interfere with the strap either. So everything looks good here. We'll test it out once we get it out on the water, how the transducer works this uh, sonar has uh, the XSV abbreviation on the uh, Garmin GPS map means it can do the uh, side view clear view and chirp sonar so you can go on the Garmin website to see what those things are if you're not familiar we'll test it all on the water and see how that works here's where the Garmin display went like I said everything else I did myself so I ran uh, all the wiring back here behind the cooler the kitchen I did have to remove these panels first you remove this panel on screws on the bottom there's one two three screws on the bottom and you slide the panel to the back it comes off and you remove this uh, seat cushion simply by unscrewing the four nuts right there you have to remove that as well and once you remove that You remove this panel right here, also has two screws on the bottom here, one screw over here in the corner, and then one screw, kind of, you have to open this compartment, but it's over there behind the speaker, the entire panel, and then uh, you have to actually get, the reason you're taking off this cover is because you need to stick your hand on behind there, and you need to uh, unscrew the nuts that hold this uh, handle. There's, uh, there are nuts on the back, so 13 millimeter nuts. So you basically put a ratchet or one of those electric ratchets and power cordless ones, and you just undo those nuts and the handle comes right in. And then with that, the panel, the speakers can stay in. The panel slides this way inward. You can reach in, unhook the speakers. There's just uh, two cannon plugs for both of them. And then you just uh, lift the panel up really simple actually you lift it up then you pull it toward you and then you disconnect the, uh, the speakers so fairly simple you do have to do this if you decide to do this project uh, there's two access holes one right here through the uh, inner fiberglass this would be the inner this would be the outer so there's an inner fiberglass here there's two access panels access holes right here and here and you have to expose those uh, holes in order to uh, 
run the wires through the tower. Otherwise, you will shave your wires. You will not be able to do it. Um, I can tell you from experience, I damaged a few wires. The reason for that is, this is the, the pipe that all the wiring is going through and comes up right here where the light is. And um, that is the only path. If you would look uh, the other way, there is no path here. There is a, the pipe ends right here and there is no hole through the fiberglass. So you would have to find, if you wanted to use this side, I don't know why you would, but if you did, you would have to do the same thing here, remove all this paneling, come up and, and drill from below and actually hit the pipe, which is extremely difficult to do. So I wouldn't even bother with this side. Everything goes through here. There's a hole already drilled here. This is the hole that they're using for uh, anchor light and also for the lighting, for the courtesy light, for these little blue lights up here. You can see where the uh, radar dome is mounted. That's what it looks like from inside here. As you can see, it blocks a little bit of a sun and the view from the uh, skyline. But the word of caution, like I said, this hole is about an inch and a half uh, round here in diameter. And uh, there's, uh, there's four bolts, one, two, three, four, that mount this entire tower to the boat, to the fiberglass. On the back side of the fiberglass, there are supposed to be washers, according to the maintenance manual that I pulled up. Uh, and Yamaha, instead of the washers, they put aluminum blocks like this long, about, uh, I'd say, three quarters inch thick. So instead of having washers, they drill through the center of the block and they put those bolts through the aluminum blocks and then use the nuts to secure the tower. Those aluminum blocks just reinforce the tower so that uh, I guess the washers weren't strong enough. After they published the manual, they decided to change that. The problem is with the block here, the aluminum block, it covers half of that hole. That's the access hole here. It covers half of it. And so the wires that are there, the anchor light and the courtesy light are fine, but nothing else you can squeeze through there. It's a sharp aluminum block on all edges. On all the edges. So uh, this is how I shaved the wire. I pushed the, pushed the wire through, I caught it, I pulled it. The guide wire was fine, the fishing wire, but then when the cable started coming through and I kept pulling from below here, just by opening this compartment and pulling, not realizing that that aluminum block was shaving the wire. So after that, I had to replace the, the cable, which was costly. But then I removed these panels. I got to the access hole. I stuck a, a ratchet in there, loosened that last nut, and I turned that aluminum block away from the hole. Once I was finished, I repositioned it to the uh, proper position and tightened it again. So that's uh, a necessary step in order to run all of your wires through here. This is get, gonna get really tight, but uh, you're gonna be running four uh, thick cables through here. And it's gonna be really, really tight. You need all the space you can get. Uh, it's fairly easy after that. Everything goes behind this cooler through this tunnel here. There's uh, actually double space in here. So between the outer hole and the inner, so you can just run wires through there. As you can see, I did install the uh, remote for the thermal camera. This is the only place it could fit. Uh, cut the hole out for it and then, then uh, run the wires for it. This, is, uh, this was another place where I wanted to put it, but unfortunately it wouldn't fit here. Not enough space. I might have a phone holder here eventually of some sort. The original phone holder was removed. You can see the uh, holes that remained from it. I just put plugs in them. Only those two holes. The rest of them are covered by the frame of the Garmin and then um, the fourth hole is actually used to uh, to run all of the four cables that come up here so I had to enlarge the fourth hole and then put a grommet that supplied with the Garmin in order to uh, finish this off looks really nice there's four cables that, that are coming in uh, one for the Garmin network where everything plugs in, one for the NME 2000, which is another way, another network where a couple other devices plug in, I'll show you which ones, a power cable for Garmin itself, and the sonar transducer. All these plug in the back. 
moving on uh, i did mount this display kind of like uh, as you can see i'm not sure if you can see it like right here there's a couple of screws here and on this panel as well so they, that mount actually bridges this gap and uh, i had to do that in order to uh, get this visual as you could see get rid of the light as you could see sitting here i did not want to i need a light i did not want to put this display as a continuation of this display because it would look really weird and it would be touching the window here this is nine inch display they also have seven and twelve twelve would not fit here because of these mounts uh these little rotating nuts that would be touching so 12 would not fit you have to go with a nine seven would be too small so um i did mount it this display kind of on the angle to keep it parallel with the window and it gives me really nice ergonomics where i can see my uh, yamaha display i can just turn my head and i can see my garmin display so all the add-ons go to the garmin display yamaha and garmin do not talk to each other they they don't have capability um, in this particular jet boat to uh, talk to each other garmin does talk to yamaha but to the outboard engines not to the uh not to the jet ski engines so so that's pretty much the cockpit and uh, the stuff that's installed here. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like on top. And I got it, like I said, it's 99.9% .9 complete. I do have to finish a couple more things. Uh, this is the Garmin Phantom 24X. They come in two sizes, 18 and 24. This is the larger one and the Phantom X is one of the newest um, radars from Garmin. It has the uh, motion scope, it tracks targets. The camera also works with the radar. Once you install the separate nine axis compass and a separate GPS receiver, which I have installed, that's what the NME 2000 network is for. Uh, the camera starts talking to the radar and if uh, radar finds a target, a moving target on the water, it'll highlight it, you can touch it and slew the camera immediately to it which is a great thing you can also rotate camera freely 360 and when it's parked it faces down uh, the light what that was here could not be reused so we had to buy this mask from sea view and this mask basically has a spot for the camera and then it has its own light so that light had to be connected instead of the original light as you can see down below i'm going to try to do this without Distorting the picture and keeping my flashlight going here. There you go. Sorry for all the movement. But these two bolts that you see in the back here, and then there's also one in the center of this mast. Those three bolts is what was holding the original anchor light from Yamaha. I did not want to toss those bolts because once I removed the, uh, the anchor light, it was the anchor light itself is uh, bolted into the metal frame down below into a little box that houses the uh, uh, courtesy lights so it is therefore attaching the roof right here fiberglass roof to the frame to the tower and so by putting those bolts back in and tighten them with the washers I was able to secure this um, the roof back firmly to the tower before I installed the mast that makes any sense the hole is basically in the middle between these three uh, bolts that were coming off the anchor light and it puts the hole in this configuration right at the edge of that um, frame so I have a hole right about here the access hole for the wires and I have a third bolt in the center which is great so the mast is mounted to the fiberglass and the fiberglass is mounted to the tower using original bolts as you can see, I have a two degree riser here or a wedge. It is two degrees thicker here than it is in the back. Without it, the radar was tilted forward too much because the roof itself is forward uh, tilted as well. Also, there is a little bit of a curve here from back to front, continuous curve. So a flat surface doesn't mount very well. What I did, there's a foam uh, gasket underneath that comes with, a, with this mast. The wedge you have to order separately. It's a two degree. They have two, four, and six. Two works great, levels the radar out at uh, cruise speed. 
and so the rubber uh, the, the gasket that goes underneath I actually put a washer on the front there's two washers one on each side under under these bolts or around the bolt which um, again sorry for the movement of the camera trying to hold it together with a flashlight and um, so there's a washer on each side which uh, allows this uh, this um, base not to wobble otherwise because of the curvature it would wobble so the washer that's embedded inside that uh, foam gasket is actually creating that uh, flash surface for the uh, this to be mounted uh, these bolts are slightly too low uh, too long that mount the uh, the radar to the mast and i will cut them that's what point one percent of what's left to do i will cut them and i have uh, white caps there's a 13 millimeter bolts and there's white caps that snap onto them and that's what I'm going to do to hide this uh, installation to hi hide the hardware a little bit uh, better so that's how this is all mounted um, when I did get into uh, when I removed that anchor light there's a whole bunch of wire that Yamaha left inside this box access wire for the uh, anchor light the original one and for the courtesy lights and they bundled it and they stuck it right here so it was on the way i actually had to go with the hook and pull that bundle out and it lives now inside my mast all that extra wire lives inside the mast um, so um, this is where the mast is mounted uh, it does block the um, uh, those nuts do block the uh, the courtesy lights slightly, but we're still getting plenty of lights. And I will also put rubber caps on these, not rubber, but actually plastic uh, caps that will cover the washer and the nut. That's the uh, last thing left to do. Same thing in the front. And um, I did consider, and I thought about this quite a bit, uh, putting a um, fiberglass plank right here in the front because where the back is mounted as i mentioned early there's two bolts original bolts that bolt into this box and then one in the front you can't see them they bolt inside this box so the fiberglass is very firm in the back here and these two bolts are connected to the fiberglass i'm not ever worried about any kind of warping going on here i did worry about uh, warping going on uh, here meaning the towel would warp up and put pressure on these washers and therefore I wanted to put a piece, a half inch piece of fiberglass here, make it nice and round and, and then bolt it on. Um, I spoke with the dealer, they said that's not necessary, there's plenty of strength here, this whole setup is not very heavy. Uh, as far as height by the way, it puts us, uh, the boat before was about 11 feet on the trailer, 10 feet on the water for, bridge, for bridges um, right now. The boat is 13, five, 13 feet 5 inches on the trailer and it's uh, 12 5 on the water. So I did gain, uh, I want to say uh, almost uh, two and a half feet, two feet and four inches with that setup, two feet and five inches. So um, that's pretty much how that all is mounted. My main point was to keep it clean and uh, I think we uh, achieved that uh, goal. And as far as uh, where uh, 12 volt wiring for all this stuff is, everything happens under the helm. I ran two uh, 6 gauge wires around this way underneath the floor into this side where the uh, original uh, batteries are located. This is my uh, red wire, it came up here, my positive, and I connected it, I removed this uh, the switch here, and then in the back I actually plugged it into right here into my house battery switch. So anytime I turn the house battery switch on, it powers, it gives me power under the helm, that's the positive power. The negative is located behind it on the other side, I'm not going to show it now, but basically the same thing, but it's on the back and it, that's where all the uh, negatives come in. Uh, where all the original equipment negatives will be on that big bus and so I just connected to that big bus six uh, gauge wire also going forward so everything is powered off of the uh, house battery switch now the Garmin itself 
has a power switch. So when you take off the screen, there's a button here and you touch that button. And then when Garmin comes on, it sends the signal through the network, through Garmin network to power everything Garmin. So the radar, the GPS um, antenna, the compass and me 2000 network, Garmin network, the uh, transducer, everything gets its power when the power switch is pressed on the Garmin. Because uh, the camera and the remote are uh, Raymarine, FLIR, they do not talk to Garmin like this. So anytime you flip the house battery switch, the camera and the remote will automatically come on. Uh, then you turn on the Garmin and it all syncs to the Garmin. To the Garmin. So that's how that works. Now everything comes in here. And it's gonna be kind of dark in here, but um, I'll try to demonstrate. I got this table already hooked into place, but um, this is where the power comes in. Basically, that's my positive that came here, six gauge wire and the negative. I, I bought these two buses. They have uh, 12 uh, connections on them each. I only needed six because there's six pieces of equipment that needed power right here. And uh, all of them, the positives are here, negatives are here. Every positive has a fuse, inline fuse. A couple items did not have fuses and it's uh, the... Um, the camera did not have a fuse and the remote um, so everything Ray Marine did not have fuses everything Garmin had fuses so I had to purchase those fuse boxes and fuses separately they recommend the fuses that you need to get the size of them and the type in the manual for all those devices so like I said everything Garmin had its own fuse everything the two Ray Marine items camera and the remote did not uh, this is the uh, NME 2000 network it is here for two reasons. This is the power for it. This is the Garmin uh, connection to the Garmin chart plotter. And this one goes to the uh, GPS antenna. I mount the GPS antenna right here. It's a remote antenna. And um, it increases the accuracy from uh, 10 feet that the Garmin GPS, built-in GPS has in the chart plotter. 10 feet or three meters down to five feet or about one and a half meter. So it's giving me a little more accuracy and it is required for uh, radar integration to the, uh, to the FLIR, to the camera. It has to have um, its own uh, GPS receiver, not rely on the, on the built-in Garmin. Also, the, third ca uh, the, the fourth cable goes to the uh, compass. And the compass, if you could see, Hides right there behind those tubes. There's a little box. I'll show you from this side. I had to remove this cup holder in order to access that area. And uh, it sits basically in the shelf. The compass is recommended to be mounted as horizontal as possible. Unfortunately, the shelf is on this angle, so it's angled slightly. And I talked to Garmin people, they said it's fine because it will need to be calibrated once we get on the water. We'll have to make a couple turns to calibrate the compass. That'll take care of that displacement angle but uh, it is pointed in the right direction so that is important as well it sits on the shelf and i was able to mount it because this fiberglass is so thin you can't just mount screws from above besides there's no space to really uh, screw the screws from here so i ended up putting tiny little bolts and then securing it with nuts black collar so it it's it really nice in here without ever noticing it so that's where the compass lives. Also for the compass, it had to be at least 12 inches away from the chart plotter, which it is. And it had to be as far away as possible from magnetic source, which is the um, amplifier. Speaking of amplifier, many of you Yamaha owners have this gadget in your, under your helm. And you probably know when the, there's no music playing, you will get uh, white noise coming out of all speakers because the, the amplifier is connected to the uh, ignition. When, as soon as you turn the ignition on, a couple seconds later, amplifier powers up and you're gonna hear white noise coming out of the speaker. So what my dealer did is he actually spliced the power wire, which is the blue wire here. He spliced it and he ran it into a switch. 
So I can manually disconnect the amplifier. The switch is located right here. It's a little hard to see, but um, I'll try to show it through the window right there. And I can just reach and flip it on or turn it off. And it's hidden behind the uh, original display. That allows me to turn off the amplifier when I'm not listening to the music and to get rid of that white noise that's always coming out of the speakers. So that takes care of that. So back to our installation. As you can see, all the wires are coming in in here. Um, this is the Garmin network and it connects the chart plotter, the radar, the camera, the remote and its own power. So this is where the Garmin network is and that's the NME2000 network. So that's just for GPS and compass and that's for everything else. And that's my installation. Um, fairly simple. It took me a couple of weekends to do this myself. Figuring this out and just buying all the parts. I did buy the Garmin display, the chart plotter and the radar on Garmin website. And I bought the camera on Amazon. It was on a pretty big discount at $2,700. Normal price is about $3,600 for that camera. So everything else I bought on Amazon, not because I like Amazon, but because it's free shipping. All the compass, the antenna, everything. All the wires, all the little bolts and nuts and everything else I needed because uh, free delivery next day. And if I get something wrong, I can always return it. Um, you do not need the sonar uh, computer with this setup because the uh, chart plotter XSV model already has the sonar receiver. So all you need is a transducer to plug into this into this display. I made a mistake of buying the uh, sonar uh, receiver, which I did not need sonar module, and I don't, did not need that. I had to return it. Um, Another thing I was going to show you here, so with this antenna, this is one of the way to mount it. I actually, there's the fiberglass above it is not thick enough to uh, mount it on screws. Those three legs have screws in them, so I didn't want to pop through the fiberglass. So I just mounted them with uh, the zip ties and they're, and they're really, really firmly. And it comes with uh, 3M tape where those legs are. So they're actually connected by sticky tape and then with those uh, zip ties and it's not going anywhere another option was to mount it through here drill a hole and actually mount it up here but i tried putting it here there was absolutely no difference in the air it was five feet down below and five feet here so it didn't matter um yeah so there was no reason to drill holes or actually take up the space which i use as a step to step up to the tower if i need to clean the windows or something so that's uh, how the whole installation went. Pretty successful, pretty happy with the way it worked out. If anybody has any questions on how I did it, feel free to comment. I'll try to answer them. And uh, I, when I researched this, I could not find any Yamaha 275s that had this done. So that's uh, why I'm making this video. Hopefully it's helpful for somebody.